Welcome to another episode of Extreme Metal Television. I'm your host, Simon. In this episode, we have a chat with Marduk, we recap Calgary Metal Fest, and we have a chat with Zay. But first, let's kick it off with a band profile. Annex Theory was formed in 2008 in Winnipeg, Manitoba. They released Beneath the Skin in 2011, and their latest release is entitled Process Existence. It's, uh, it's called Process Existence. We recorded it um, throughout March and April um, with Travis Montgomery from Threat Signal doing the mixing, mastering everything for that. Um, and yeah, just a bit different, a little more where we're at now. I guess this is kind of what we've wanted to sound like for since we started, really. So yeah, yeah just uh, basically just putting out, you know, all our new thoughts and ideas and making it accessible. Well, can you tell me about the production process for the album? Yeah, um, did yeah he did actually yeah. the engineering for it. You can go ahead. Um, we just recorded at our jam space for the most part. Vocals, everything, and then uh, it was just DIs, yeah. Yeah, it was just DIs, and we just sent out to Travis. Travis is uh, reamped it. I mean, he, we know him as a as a person, but I mean, he really is experienced with that sort of stuff, I guess. So basically, we just send him the DIs. You know, it's comfortable. We can track it at home. We're not paying by the hour for studio time. You can you know get it right. Uh, yeah, send it to him, and he reamps it. You know, he sends us. It's probably how many mixes did we get? Like four or five before we actually settled yeah, on something. Yeah, about five. And then yeah, basically you know just sends us what he likes, what he doesn't like, and. Yeah. So, like, yeah, yeah, I guess that was that was an interesting way to go about it. You, you hear well, some bands doing it, but not everyone goes about yeah, it. Yeah, well, I mean, for us, we're just you know we're very laid back, and we don't really want to you know cracking the whip on anything, especially because you know that's not we want it to come out naturally. We don't want to force it. So it, we it, all have very different time schedules. To keep exactly, yeah. that's yeah. another thing to too. It's and practice on your own time. Yeah, and that way we can be practicing and recording like at the same time too. And yeah, everybody can go in when other guys are working or whatever. So. <laughs> Why did you guys decide to release the EP as a as a free download? Um, well, we have I guess we have a lot of new material that we're really stoked on, basically. So that was one thing. You know, we wanted just to put something out that people, that you know, that we're proud of. That people don't necessarily have to pay for it. You know, that they can just hear it. And, you know, if they get into it, then you know, we'll only be looking more forward to what's going to come after that, basically. Uh, what's next for Anna, sir? Touring as much as we can. Yeah, I mean, logically, yeah. since we have a couple of EPs out now, the next step, release-wise, is an album. But that's you know, right now, what's important is you know, touring and spreading what we can do. As, as I said, like with this new EP, we've, we're really, really happy with how it sounds compared yeah. to the older the stuff. The closest and, thing that great. we've done that we felt. Is yeah, sound. like we're. I mean, we're never going to be completely happy, but just because you know. It's, yeah, totally. But this is, you know, we're really, really stoked on this. We want to get it out there. So touring and just, you know, trying to spread the word. Hi, this is Jarko from Korpiklani and you are watching Extreme Metal Television. Marduk have been releasing punishing, unrelenting black metal for over 20 years, and their latest album, Serpent Sermon, is certainly no exception. We caught up with guitarist and founding member Morgan Hagansen and asked him what we can expect from this new album. What should I tell you? I mean, it's our 12th full-length album, studio album, and what should I say? It's the, it symbolizes the strength of the band in the year of 2012, after 22 years, and cliche thing to say that you think it's the best album you have done, but I'm very proud of it, but I'm proud of all the albums we have done, but I think this is the most diabolical album we have done in a long time in the way that it maybe shines through even more than on the other albums and it's the message comes forth where we write in your face and the album title is very much speaking for the whole concept of the album well, well Serpent Saints has this, this brutal crushing heavy sound but it also takes on some uh, different directions uh, is it important for you to keep pushing yourselves creatively? in a way yes but I mean of course it's always uh, important to push boundaries but I mean when it comes to create music we really don't sit down and think that we have to do an album that is in a certain direction but I mean we, we go where the creativity takes us and we just let the energy flow and it takes us in the direction it takes us then we spend a lot of energy in trying to make music and lyrics become one so they reflect each other that's what I believe in yeah. to create uh, dynamics I think it's really important that they reflect each other so you paint a strong picture in the mind of what it's all about 
songwriting process like for this album? I mean it's hard to say because it's different from song to song I mean there's no specific pattern when we work on music sometimes you for example I can get a I can have a song title in my head or just a lyric line and everything comes just comes to the right place and sometimes you have a, you work with a riff and all of a sudden you sit with a whole song and then you need to work to get the lyrics to work together so the song becomes the whole the unit it should be so it's different from song to song well, has your approach changed over all these years? To songwriting? Yeah. No, not really. It's always been that different from song to song. Yeah. Serpent Sermon has been garnering some great reviews and many people are calling it Marduk's best album in years. It was released on June 5th by Century Media Records and in partnership with the band's own Blood Dawn Productions, we asked Morgan what the recording process was like. We as a band have worked with music and lyrics and who should know better than us how we want it. I mean, we don't need any outside to come in and tell us that we should sound like this or that. I mean, we're competent enough after all the years to know how we want it and I mean, or we record in a studio which is owned by our bass player, you know, and that makes it also easier to work because we can work in a should I say relaxed, relaxed atmosphere. We can go in and work three days, four days in a row, day and night, without taking a break, and then I can go home for a week and then go back when I feel in the right mood to, to do the recording. We don't have to work in a different city or even a different country and work from nine to five and having studio technicians that need to go out, pick up children or whatever, we can do it the way we like it. And I think that is a spirit that's being reflected in the recording and all. We can have the artifacts in the studio that no other studio would like to have. So for us, it's a perfect thing to do. Well, the artwork on the album is uh, quite striking as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that? It's uh, done by our vocalist, Mortis. And as I said before, when it comes to music and lyrics, who <laughs> know better how it should sound than we, and who better know how to get the reflection when it comes to the artwork than us. So we do it by ourselves as well, so we get the true reflection of what it's all about. Well, you keep pretty much everything in house. Yeah, we like to have control over what we do. Yeah, um, that's really cool. Because a lot of bands just do an album, they just have somebody do a cover artwork, or just take an artwork, and it doesn't really reflect the music, but we think it's equal importance. I mean, music, lyrics, the visuals, everything is of equal importance to get the message. I recently read this story that uh, you guys were banned from playing in Minsk. Now, I think the quote that I read was one of the quotes anyway was the band preaches Satanism, which is nothing to do with art. What do you have to say to that sort of closed mindedness? I mean, it's strange, but I mean, you also have to consider it's the last dictatorship there is around, especially yeah. in the European part. So, I mean, I mean, it's a strange thing to say how he can judge that. And he also said that we're singing, singing about death and uh, about the Third Reich, and our music can be considered nothing as destructive. So for me it was very flattering that somebody reacted that way because he's absolutely correct. He nailed it. Yeah. I just thought it was arrogant that he could say that it, yeah. it wasn't art. How, yeah. how could you, you... For me it was inspiring, you know. Yeah. It was a long time ago we had any turbulence like that going on in the world. So it was a huge inspiration. It makes me even more hungry yeah. to create. The first Calgary Metal Fest took place last month, four venues, 37 bands, and one hell of a good time. We caught up with the promoter Nate Renault and asked him why he decided to put on such a show. Because it wasn't being done. Yeah. Just straight up. It wasn't being done. And I just I just know people. Like, I know all the people, so yeah. that's why. That's why that's as simple as that. You just Yeah, I mean it was also my birthday that kind of got <laughs> out of control, but whatever. Yeah. Might as well, there's no Calgary Metal Fest, so I felt like it had to happen. You mentioned that you felt that Calgary needed a festival like this. And that, what do you think it hasn't been done before, really? I don't know, maybe just a lack of a guy like me that, you know, knows the technical... Like, his festivals turn into shit shows fast. 
if you're not like right on it and, and if it's not planned out well. And, you know, doing the work with Noctis and just all the stage work I've done and stuff, it just makes it easy for me. It makes it kind of second nature because I've just I've done it so many damn times now. Especially since I started doing the live sound thing, yeah. I've had to deal with you know people people just drop a bunch of stuff on your plate and there you go. <laughs> so you got to deal with it. But I try not to do that at my shows. Just try to make it so that it happens awesome. started out as we got an invite for Nate's birthday and then a couple weeks later it fucking posted up for a metal fest and we were playing at the D so Nate told us yeah it's it, our birth my birthday show kind of exploded like bad zit <laughs> <laughs> but bad zits explode in a good way fucking right man you get Calgary metal fest out of it yeah, man. <laughs> annual annual that's the big one annual Popping Calgary metal fest <laughs> it's got to be every year this is the start of something big and it's going to be fucking amazing. To not do this is just a travesty. It's not right to not do this yeah, kind of thing. So, so many good whether it's once a year or twice a year or three times a year, as long as there's like a big thing going on where all the bands can kind of come through, it's just great, man. Having Metal Fest is what it should be. When I did decide to do Calgary Metal Fest, I was like, okay, let's make it. You know, like, if if everything goes well, which it is, it's going well. So, like, you know, money-wise, everybody should get paid and stuff. So, you know, not much, but everybody should get paid. Life is good, you know? But, yeah, I would, I would like to make it annual. And I, I did... I got established this year, you know, and next year, I, you know, as years progress, I hope to get more and more, like, higher profile bands, kind of thing. In this episode of Vintage Metal, we're going to take a look at Canadian speed metalers Exciter and their second full-length Violence in Force. Now, this is the often overlooked follow-up to the band's debut Heavy Metal Maniac, but this album posted better production and a bit more of a polished sound from the band. It was also their debut on Megaforce Records. Now, I can't tell you why this band seems often overlooked when it comes to influential bands, when people are talking about influential bands, but let me tell you, Exciter's sound definitely played a role in shaping 80s music and beyond, and the band is still kicking today. Check out Violence and Force, you will not be disappointed. Calgary hard rockers Zay are getting set to release their debut album. We caught up with the band recently to talk about their new CD. New album's right here, man. <laughs> it's called Suck It Up. Um, it's a collection of a uh, bunch of tunes I did, uh, kind of inspired from when I lived in Japan for a while, I guess. A lot of where the inspiration came from. I came back to Canada and recorded them up as quick as I could, and this is what came out of it. So, uh, did you record it all yourself then? Yeah, I did. I did uh, all the instruments myself uh, on Colin's little studio here. Yeah. Uh, how did you find the, the, the writing and recording process of so doing a record by yourself? I mean, well, it's, it's quite a... It is, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you know, I got lots of friends who've done the whole the whole shebang themselves and stuff before and you know, you really don't realize how much work it, and time it takes to put into, you know, writing an album on your own and yeah. you got to you got to dabble in all these different areas, design and you got to design, you know, you got to do a bit of marketing, you got to do you got to do all kinds of shit, man. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you got me wondering how I'm falling asleep and it's just a dream. I wake me up, child, every time. Can you explain Zay's song? Sure, I get asked that all the time. What does Zay mean? What the hell is Zay? Which is fair enough, it's a Japanese character. 
Um, doesn't really have a lot of meaning by itself, but it's kind of uh, if you see like some sentences you might say or some words you might say if you add the syllable z on the end, gives it a bit more of a badass kind of rock and roll sound. So uh, as soon as I found that out, you know, from my studies and whatnot, I was like, "Zeh, it's cool. I'm gonna use that a lot more." I was like, "I'm gonna make it my fucking band name." <laughs> so I did. And that's that's basically it. Zay has existed both as a live band in Canada and also in Japan. I was interested to find out what the differences were performing in Japan versus Canada. The thing is here in Canada, the biggest shock for me was here, when we play a show we get paid to, we get paid to play music. Otherwise we, we probably don't play. But like, unless you know it's like your first gig or something, or your first couple gigs or it's a charity event or you never, well you play for free sometimes anyway just because it's fuck fun time, right? But like in Japan it's, play, it's pay to play. So you got to sell tickets, you got to do the footwork to get people to your shows. Um, and if you do that, then you can make money and you can progressively go to bigger, what they call live houses, which is, uh, it's, you know, it's an establishment that's solely for the purpose of bands. They have, uh, they have all the equipment there, they have the stage, they have the PA guy, and you rent the whole package. Yeah. So there's no cart and gear, which is pretty fucking sweet. <laughs> but, um, so that's a bit of a difference in, uh, in that sense, yeah. Um, and the way they mosh, right? Like, they don't really push each other around quite the same we do here. They're very polite about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, I guess that was my next question. How are the audiences different than here? In, um, they're, they're awesome. Yeah. It's different, but it's awesome. Like, yeah. they're, they're supportive. They'll, like, they'll, once they've heard the chorus a couple times, they'll, they don't even know what the words are even, per se, but they'll be trying to sing along and they'll pump in their fists and they're jumping up and down and stuff. Yeah. Um, and Tokyo has got a shitload of people so I mean advertising's good right you stand outside any concert here's my band 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 and you can do that kind of footwork right and get people to your shows and but uh it, it's good man the, the crowds are they're fun they yell for you and shit like I was hanging out in Black Star, Tokyo and I was drinking by the backstage door she was beating on the drums like an animal heavy metal presses cry your family's well, that's it for another episode of Extreme Metal Television. I'd like to thank you all for joining us once again. I'd also like to thank my co-hosts King and Dr. Gore. If you'd like to contact us, please feel free to send us an email at extrememetaltv at gmail.com. Check out our Facebook page. And before I let you go, here's a terrible tale from the road from Wretched. Uh, I got set on fire one time. Oh, yo, yo, you gotta explain yeah, that. Yeah, um, I'm, a, I'm a horrific snorer when I'm wasted and <laughs> pass out on my back. And um, <laughs> our old vocalist, he was like sitting over with our merch guy at the time. We're in Kansas City. He's like, I'm allowed to swear. Yeah, sure. Okay, he's like, fuck his snoring. Like, fuck his snoring. <laughs> All this, and like, he comes over and douses my leg in jeans and lighter fluid. <laughs> At first, they did a tiny flame and then snuffed it out because they were kind of nervous. And then they were like, fuck it, and then douse it. And like, you the waited flame, until it got big. The flame went like this high, and then I finally woke up, and they are like, Sean, you're on fire! <laughs> I'm like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Run I'm like, shit, shit, shit. Like, oh, he did. I had to like stop, drop, and roll. I'm like, the only thing that went through my head was like, stop, drop, and roll, stop, and roll. They had to like snuff me out. I'm like, strip my pants off. I'm like, fuck you guys! Like, <laughs> And then they locked me out on the balcony. I was, it, was, it, was crazy, it was a crazy night.